Welcome back to Fortnite at Franny Fazclair's. I'm never going to be able to say the name of this. So we are going on an alternate route today. Or continuing it to see where we go. So we're just skipping stuff we've already seen. Zero was right. Apparently the girls here can tell when someone hasn't been getting any release lately. That's... Okay, so what was it? What she said? Don't take this the wrong way, but you smell different. I still want to grope your nice butt, but you don't smell like a customer anymore. Okay. That's because I haven't gotten off before reporting in tonight. Aw, and here I hadn't sent you any news yet. Okay, so we've seen that. So we're just looking at new stuff. Why did slash do you want to be a nuclear engineer? Promise you won't laugh? I promise. I really liked Simpsons growing up. Homer wasn't the smartest person, but people like him... But people liked him, and he tried really hard to provide for his family. He also wasn't a nuclear engine. Oh, shit, he was. Technically. I figured if he could work at a nuclear plant, so could I. That's utterly adorable. Thanks. Um, we should probably head back now. Has... Has Smith not only stolen souls and discovered a way to make someone immortal, but also found a way to make endless food? Imagine if these powers and oddities could be harnessed for good. Regardless, I fill my box, then head to the bar. Alright, so again, we're just skipping stuff we've already seen. I guess that bathing is something that struck with the girls when Smith did whatever he did. Same with yawning. Regardless, I have some time to kill before the rest of the night. Might as well get some research in. Chiku comments about wanting to be a nuclear engineer comes to mind. So I do research for anyone missing in Waterfall Institute that might fit the bill. By pure chance, I find someone. She's blonde, curvy, and overall fits the bill for human Chiku in my mind. She's a picture. She's pictured as a missing person in, the new, in a newspaper from five years ago with the following tagline. Pictured is Sophia Hart, cheerleader and sophomore at Waterfall Institute studying nuclear engineering. Her last known location was an eight was on Eighth and Jefferson near her dormitory. If you have any information, please call XXXX. A further photo I find online shows Sophia eating pizza and partying with her friends. I also find one of her friends mentioning that Sophia struggle with bulimia episodes. Unfortunately, that same friend isn't accepting DMs from strangers. Still, this is big. I figured out who Chiku used to be. After a few hours of researching, my shift comes to an end. I've made it through another night somehow, so we can just skip. When I get back to my apartment, I find that it's been thoroughly cleaned. Dishes, clothes, carpet, everything has been tidied up. Zero is also waiting for me on the bed. Welcome home. I hope you don't mind, but I got bored and wanted to clean. God, she has become the best girlfriend. I don't mind in the slightest. Fucking come home with me. And I have good news. I think I found who Chiku was. See this? I'm almost positive this was her. You know, I'm really tempted to use that now, God of Anarchy, as a uh, thumbnail. Please remind me to use that. In fact, hold on. Zero studies my phone and Sophia's picture before nodding. What will you do with this information? I'm not sure. I can. I'm not sure. I can't bring it up at work unless the power cuts out, or if I do, or if I do it out of sight of the cameras. I might just have to sit on this information for now. I see. That is probably a good idea. Do you want to cuddle or do something else? Let's just cuddle and research. Fuck it. We get the double. Cuddle and research magic with zero. Why not cuddle and research? I want to look up paranormal stuff, and having you chip in would be an immense help. Okay. With Zero spooning against me in bed like a jetpack, I start journeying into the paranormal on my phone. Zero helps by pointing out what she thinks is valid information, while also dismissing any truly crackpot theories. Most of the information I gain sinks in, though. It's hard to focus with squishy cold mounds pressed against my back. 
and Zero's breath on my nape. There's also an overflowing of shit to wade through when it comes to paranormal stuff. However, I can at least start to tell there's truth into games like Mortuary's Assistant. That is a really fun game. I like that game a lot. Good on you, Dev. That's a good game. And which parts could be real? I actually need to play that game now that I have a better computer. I couldn't finish it because the computer kept bugging out with it. I think I understand how Zero created the plushie doll that I brought home. By embedding part of herself into the plushie form, she anchored herself to the mortal plane. Oh, hey, mage. I don't... Spoiler. I don't know whether the part... That part of her was a real body or part of her animatronic form, but Zero tells me that it doesn't matter. Okay, so it is female. Okay. Yeah, no, I see it in the... I see it in the later versions, yeah. So long as the subject is willing, when you create such a doll, their spirit can bounce between their bodies and their doll at will. I have a feeling you guys requested this game just so you could force me to learn the lore. There is also ways to bind someone into a doll unwillingly, but you would but you wouldn't be no better than Smith if you did that. I nod in agreement, not voicing the dark thoughts of putting Smith into a doll so he can get a taste of his own medicine. That thought falls away as I get truly comfy and content in Zero's arms before nodding off. Nine hours later, I get up to find that Zero's no longer in my apartment. Sounds more like Chucky. I mean, Mage is a living doll in the comic, but you guys kind of know her origin anyway. What the fuck is that? See, you guys don't see it in the YouTube video, but the Discord, the, the, the supporters are all trying to screw with me. They do this every time I'm recording. Rather, her plushie is on the bed where she could, l where she once laid, along with a note. Don't forget, guys, if you become a YouTube member, a member on Patreon, a subscribe star, or even on Twitch, you on either channel, by the way, on YouTube, this or Sinfully Pure, you guys get to watch these videos live as I'm recording them and try to throw me off. Call me if you need me. Remember not to get too pent up, otherwise the girls might pounce on you during the night. When I check on the phone, when I check my phone, I see that I've received a text from Chiku while I was asleep. Here's... Okay, we've seen this. See, that's a cute little icon. That is actually really adorable. I like that. Well, that's nice of her. The question is, do I act on her photo? Yeah, we do. We know, too. After relieving some pressure to Chiku's photo, I work out, hop into the shower, then head off to the nightclub. We're right on time. <clears throat> So we can just skip. There's no way these lyrics are targeted at me and the situation at this damn club. I'm lost in the spectacle as Chiku joins in for the chorus. Alright, so we have tasks to do. Yeah, this is normal. My secret admin account might be able to recover the footage so long as there's no special programs in play. I use my tech savvy I have and make an attempt. In the process, I note there's a watch, watchdog program monitoring that specific camera. It's not meant to alert Smith or record to a log if someone's accessing it, though. Instead, it seems to be some sort of censoring program that triggers under certain conditions. The problem is that I don't have enough skill or knowledge to know how to reverse engineer this program and recover the footage. Ah well, might as well replace the broken camera. Okay, so if we would have studied, I guess, a bit more of that, we would have gotten it. Let's see, let's tech Zero and see if she can do anything. I know of one individual that might be able to help with this situation. Zero. Hey, getting weird text from the block number. Same guy's last few nights, I think. Can you do anything with your ghostly powers? I have, I have found him. He's, he's Sa Sire Peck, the night guard before you. Does he have no dick? Oh, he doesn't. Right, it got bit off. Want his address? Or should I convince him to leave you alone? Actually, let's get his actual address. I tell Zero to get 
Swari's address, and actual phone number so I can possibly confront him later. A number and an address comes from Zero's number shortly after. When I look it up on Google Maps, it's one of the more rundown parts of the city. I definitely don't want to meet Swari there if I can help it, much less turn up unannounced. For now, I simply thank Zero and return to my nightly duties. I didn't force you to play this game. Uh, patrons did. Let's see. What should we do next? I guess prepare dough. Chiku was right about Smith. Okay, so we've seen this. So we can't skip, so this is new. Preparing the dough is simple with Smith's instructions, yet time-consuming. Based on how much I have to prep, the club must go through an army's worth of pizza during the day. At least I don't have to worry about being jumped by the girls while I'm down here. Oh, she didn't show up this time. On to other tasks. Okay, she didn't show up that time. Might as well get some research in. Let's get a little security. Physical security, AI encoding. I dive into coding tutorials. Due to the complex nature of the subject and my relative inexperience, I don't make a whole lot of headway. After a few hours of researching, my shift comes to an end. I made it through another night somehow. I feel like I wasted that, though. But that might be useful. Yeah, we'll just go with that. After a night of events, I get the gut feeling that dealing with Swari sooner rather than later will be the best thing for everyone involved. Sawyer, sorry, Sawyer, Swari is somebody else. Woo, that, I don't know why that Freudian slip happened. As my mom used to say, the longer you let crazy simmer, the worse the stew will be. I have Sawyer's number and address thanks to Zero, but showing up out of the blue would not be safe. Not just because of the Sawyer lives in the city, he strikes me as the type to shotgun random visitors who knock on his door. Why? Because I'm thinking of Swery, the uh, the dev. I think my brain, when I saw the way it's... For some reason, my head just keeps going to that. Because my head fucking mis misspells shit. That's why I call Akabar, Akabar, Akabar. Like, at this point, nobody corrects it anymore. Not just because Sawyer lives in the city. He strikes me... Okay. The fuck is that? Chat, stop that. Instead, I text him asking if we can meet. He texts back with the address of a public park and a time 30 minutes from now. I'll have to really hoof it to get there. Meeting in public should be safer, but it also means summoning Zero might cause issues if I'm not careful. Still, this is my best shot to hear Sawyer, so I take it. 28 minutes later, I'm seated on a bench watching early morning joggers and old people moving about the city park. A man in an oversized black trench coat and ski mask flips onto the bench beside me. Oh, fuck off. He speaks in a terrible imitation of Batman voice. Oh, God, hold on. Let me get my throat spray. You think I'm kidding. I actually do need this. Oh, I have to completely cope my voice for this. Were you followed? I'm never doing that again, chat. That was a mistake. No, were you? Of course not. No, fuck you. This is the voice he gets. Of course not. The agents of orthodoxy can't track me. Oh, good. He's one of those types. I had a feeling, but this confirms his brand of crazy. So, why is it that you want me to quit my job at Frenny Fazclair's? How did you even get my number in the first place? No, I regret that voice a lot. I'm glad my, my th vocal cords had a uh, numbing spray. Sawyer, Sawyer shuffles on the bench, looking out across the small hills of the dew-covered grass. It, it was easy to pick up your number. The government tracks everything you do. All I had to do was break free of their mind control and listen to the wind. I regret nothing with this voice. Okay, and why should I quit? Because those girls ain't right. They're part of the global conspiracy to upload everyone's minds to the Matrix so the lizard men can control our thoughts and make the frogs gay! I did it so you didn't have to, chat. This is getting me absolutely nowhere. 
I had a feeling Sawyer wasn't playing with a full deck of cards, but this all confirms he's either gone insane or always was. Still, as crazy as he may be, I might be able to glean some useful information if I get him talking about the right thing. Damn, really? What isn't right about them so I, so I know exactly what to avoid? The bear is actually a siren in disguise. Her songs twist your mind and make you weak to her physical emanations. The fox is always in the hen house, feeding upon the carrion, carrion lord's corpse. What? What? What did I read? The bunny is a stripper. Fair enough. And the chicken? He shifts uncomfortably, his legs closing reflectively as if on to guard his crotch. The chicken lowers you in with the promise of a feast only to take what makes you a man. I decide to lean into his performance, hoping for further information. I see, thanks for telling me. I noticed some of those things too. What more can you tell me about the chicken? I don't want to lose anything to her. She works for them, you know, the matriarchy. They want to shackle all men and make us their slaves. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this is getting dumb. I've already said the frog's gay. Those they deem unworthy end up castrated and sent to the physical, to the psychic crystal mines in Nevada. What? I didn't know there were psychic crystal mines in Nevada. Sawyer is very eager to explain that to me as he launches into a monologue. Oh, fuck you. I wish I hadn't done that voice. Oh, thank you. It's extremely clear to me that this man needs help. Right now, he seems harmless, but it's a short drive from conspiracy nut to murderer. I need to figure out how to get him to leave me alone, but first, I'm curious about one thing. What was that about a carry-on lord and the fox? He scratches his left forearm as if it were a nervous tick. She takes the souls of men and binds them into plastic soldiers to fight for her amusement. Her forces are too great for the army of light to handle. There's a Linkara joke in there somewhere, but I can't think of it. She invades the rightful prop property of men. Oh, good. That wasn't cryptic at all. Still, it might help me find Fex's real identity somewhere down the line. You know what? I'm kind of liking this game more. They just became a shitpost. I think I've gotten all I can from the deranged man. Now to pour it on thick and hope he buys the act. Alright, thanks for your intel. I can't say too much, but you may have just helped save countless lives and possibly countless souls. We can't meet again. The risk for both of us is too great. You need to stay safe and keep your head down. Yeah, I like this. This is a quality ship post. This was a good request. Of course, of course. Glad I could help the forces of light. El Sai Kongru, brother. Did I just summon a fucking elder demon? Is she behind me? No, Suka's not here. Okay, we're good. Sawyer stands, looks about... Sir Sawyer stands, looks about nervously, flips up the corners of his trench coat, then hastily leaves the park. I'm not entirely sure he's been dealt with, though. Maybe I should have Zero haunt him for a bit? Okay, chat, do you want Zero to haunt him, or do you want to leave the psycho alone? Chat's decision after yelling at me for a while was haunting. I'm sorry, who won the vote? See, they, they do this. As soon as I'm about to make a decision, they decide to tie the vote. Fine. Fuck you, haunt. Might be for the best for Zero to monitor Sawyer until I'm absolutely sure he can no longer be a factor. Okay, she's just gonna watch him. The added benefit to that plan is Zero can mess with Sawyer and drive him to do something that'll get the cops called if he tries anything further. It's a bit macabre, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. I know Zero will do her best to keep me safe. After shooting off a text to that effect, Zero sends one back. I will watch him. I left you a batch of cookies in your apartment. Why is Zero becoming the best girl? Am I wrong? Zero is the gosh darn best girl. I don't know why there's no music. She's the best. If there is, I can't hear it. This entire... Affair wasted all the time I had I have before I have to sleep. 
I'll research more after I wake up. I wake up nine hours later. There's a text from Zero waiting for me. Remember not to get up too pent up, otherwise the girls might pounce on you during the night. Yep. Might as well research something even if I can't get too deep into anything right now. If what I'm reading is true, then I think I understand the process of how to create my own wards against magic and technology. Most reputable sources maintain that scrying isn't real, but I'm willing to bet Smith still has his office and home warded against magic all the same. Maybe that's how he, he's keeping Zero out from sensitive areas? I also think I might be able to conjure up a thunderstorm with a 24-hour lead-up time if I have the right components. Trouble is, those components aren't going to be something I can just grab at a normal curio or magic store. The hours pass faster. Okay, so now we got that. Uh, I'm not interested in any of the main four girls. There's no right answer to that. I'm gonna keep that answer. This might get a good chunk of the time to explore the HVAC system. It might let me enter some of the more restricted areas or get away from any danger. I'm not expecting to find any major secrets, but I never know when it comes to Frenny Faz Claire's. An hour later, I've managed to map about 85% of the vents. There's ways into the, to the pizzeria VIP areas and even the exterior of the building without showing up on, the, uh, on any cameras. I've also found two passageways with added security. Specifically, laser trip wires and what I think is a sound monitor. All my rewatches of Mission Impossible came in the clutch here. One way leads to where Smith's office is, while the other goes down to what I imagine must be the server room. For now, I head back to the security room to do research. Let's see. We did some magic. I pick up a few more concepts and coding techniques, but nothing major at this point. You know what? Let's do just a tiny bit of physical. At some point, I'm going to have to get into Mr. Smith's office. There's all manners of videos online showing how to defeat different locks and barriers. I don't know what's keeping Mr. Smith's office safe, though. For now, I order a lockpicking kit from a local store here in the city. Until I get some hands-on practice, I won't be able to make much headway. After a few hours of research, my shift comes to an end. So, before I leave for the night, I, text Zero, I get a text from Zero. Someone broke into Sawyer's apartment just now. There was a gunfight. I'm fine. He's dead. The police are writing it off. A gang violence, but I think it was a hit. Damn, either Sawyer was closer to the truth than I thought, or he was a victim of pissing off the wrong neighbors. I worry that might mean I'm next if I piss off Smith, if I piss Smith off and or get fired. I made it through another night somehow. Wow. In doing research into the paranormal, I think I've identified a potential magic store. That's the real deal. I have no idea what their prices might be like, but I hope I don't have to break the bank. Time to do some shopping. So we're at the shopping part and it's different. Okay. Let's see. We'll go to the magic shop first. The Curio store is over on 18th Street, putting it firmly in the Lake Little Korea district of the city. Yeah, why do you think I have so much medicine, folks? I'm always in pain. The shop has a simple sign above the door that reads Curios, along with the Korean translation. It looks a little rustic in the door, is withered, and the display case window is scratched and slightly fogged. Inside the shelves are packed to capacity with knickknacks, antiques, and strange objects without obvious purposes. The owner is a, wi is a wizened Korean woman that is hunched over a cane as she hobbles to meet me. When she speaks, it's with an ancient, educated, and mysterious voice. Oh, welcome to my little shop. I'm Ra Chion. What brings you here? I'm looking into the magic stuff. My research tells me you're a genuine shop. 
You're a genuine shop for such things? Madame Chiyun chuckles and grins. Perhaps it depends on what you look for? Since I can tell that you are n a new pract practitioner, I will only sell you materials that I judge you can safely use. Although, she squints at me as if trying to see my aura. You've encountered a powerful memory obliteration ward recently. I can make you something to counteract that. I am skilled in such things. However, whomever set up the ward might have done so for your protection. It's up to you if you want to surpass the ward. It will not be cheap. You mean someone's been erasing and modifying my memory? That's just great. How much are we talking? The ward will- Whoa! Wow. Surprise must show on my face as Madame Ch as Madame Chiun grins. You need not decide right away. Take a time around, do some soul searching. The offer remains open until I close today. Should we buy it? Mm, should we buy it? Fuck it. I'll take the memory obliteration ward. Very well, please take a seat. I will take some time to prepare. Madame Chiyun motions to an old, ornate chair in the corner of her shop. I take a seat, pull out my phone, and settle in as she goes into the back of the store. Thirty minutes pass, then an hour. I am about to get up and check on in on Madame Chiyun when she returns. In her hands is a silver necklace with an emerald pendant. Strange symbols and glyphs are burned into the gem beneath the surface. As long as you wear that necklace, you will remember everything. However, the moment you take it off, any memory obliteration wards you encounter will work again. Try not to lose the necklace. Keep it safe. I pay, take the necklace from her, and put it over my head. A strange jewel resonates through the jewelry before it settles against my skin. Other than that, nothing else seems to have changed. Are you sure it works? Quite sure. All right. Can I afford this? Thanks to my research, I bought some of the components for summoning a thunderstorm. I purchased them w with the thinking that they'll come in handy for if slash when I break into Smith's office. That's it. I don't think we can afford anything. We're fucking broke. Return home with my purchases. I'm broke. Might as well do some research. As I settle in to continue to research on the missing persons, a picture jumps out to me. It's a photo of a girl named Wee Yong Mi. She's pictured at a gaming store nearby the Waterfall Institute campus, winning a war gaming tournament three years ago. Her body is phenomenal, and she's clad in gothic Lolita-style clothes that solidify her as being an alpha nerd. The kind of woman that men lust after and will fight to the death to claim. The missing person reports read, Be on the lookout for Wee Yong Mi, a senior studying architecture at Waterfall Institute. She was a member of the dance team and was well known among her peers. Her last known location was 5th and Madison, near her dormitory. If you have any information, please call XXX. That's another girl that was taken near her dorms. Frankly, I'm surprised security on the Institute's campus is slash was that poor. I even find a press briefings where the community demands action to keep the college students safe and the police promising that they'll be doing everything in their power to do so. Still, I'm fairly confident I've found my girl, Fexa. That just leaves Frenny, Bonnie, and Zero for me to discover. That's all I can do for now. I need to sleep before I can continue. With the club closed and all my errands settled, I have a big stretch of time in which to do some research. I can probably get in six big chunks of focus studies. What to look for first? I think... Hmm. I want to get closer with the magic stuff, but AI coding, that would get us up. So would the missing person. Uh, I'm going to look at physical, mm, physical security. Thanks to me ordering locally, I get my hands on my lock picking kit fairly quickly. The kit comes with three practice locks, each with of raising difficulty. For now, I focus on the easy one. It's transparent so I can see the tumbler and pins inside as I work. 
What should I do second? I pick up a few more concepts of coding techniques, but nothing major at this point. At the very least, I can start understanding programming jo programmer jokes I've seen on social media. I call upon Zero and sit against her in bed. With her help, I'm able to research magic more efficiently. Now that I know more about wards, I know how to subvert even those put in place by a master. If I could sneak a particular sigil onto Smith, I could hex him or invite demons from beyond to torment him. The trouble is actually meeting Smith in the flesh. So far, I haven't had the pleasure even after working at the club all this time. I also think I understand the proper sigil to, blot, to bind a soul to an object like Zero and her plushie. With a little more effort, I might be able to crack how the girl's souls are bound to the animatronics. I also find more information about weather control rituals. The more I dig into this weather control stuff, the more I wonder if it's real. Because if it is real, then everyone would be doing it. The missing key is genuine ectoplasm or other physically imbued substances. Even then, such a ritual is only about 40% effective. Hmm, genuine ectoplasm? I don't suppose you could. If you milk me like a cow, yes. The words go straight to my head. Want to research for? Might do more of that. In practicing my lock picking and watching further videos, I've come to realize just how insecure most security measures are. Take the club's cameras, for example. If you have physical access like I do, then you can upload any custom firmware you want. That means I don't even need admin access to the security office laptop to compromise the cameras. Still, I don't know what's keeping Smith's office safe, though. And I don't want to blow my co cover finding out. And now for my fifth chunk of research. We're getting pretty good. I'm getting better at programming and becoming what is known as a power user. At this point, I can read most forms of coding and generally understand what's going on. I can rewrite a few se semi-helpful scripts on my own. Almost out of free time before I have to sleep, I go to the club for my evening shift. Okay, so this will be the last part we do for this episode. Continue researching local crimes. Okay, no, there's nothing there. I continue to research coding. Uh, okay, none of that is different, so... Let's get that done. Alright, so we'll do this next time, guys. Thank you for joining us.